So here we are today at Trading Enterprises and we've got with us the wonderful Andrew St. Pierre White who is an absolute legend in the off-roading scene. And what are you doing in Dubai, Andrew? Well, I came, uh, this is my second trip this year mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it so much the first time. I had to find a finder, an excuse to come back and that is it there. It's a level red uh, Wrangler uh, and I had to drive a Jeep in the desert. Yeah. So I'm here to do that and go to the, um, the adventure, adventure Overland Show. Cool, but this is a bit of a traitorous bit of business for you because normally we see you in Toyotas and Nissans and Land Rovers. What are you doing out here with Jeeps? Well, I, last year I had a I had a shoot with a, with a Jeep, mm -hmm. with a Rubicon. Yeah. And again, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let's combine the two, Dubai in a Jeep. I mean, I don't know a lot about the Jeeps, yeah. so I need to learn and I need to drive them. But you I love... You've a mostly Land Rover background, right? Not, well, no, I've had... Uh, I think it's 15, 14 4 by 4s Four of those 14. are 14. You could be I Arab. Think 14. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, all have gold on them and no, like no, cheetahs no, and things. No, that's stuff. where I might be <laughs> different. I had four Land Rovers. I've had two G Wagons, but the 290 GD, the 461. It's a bit posh, isn't it? No, the 461 series. Oh, okay. Awesome. Correction, yeah, correction. They Proper were diesels. Fans. They were wonderful. I loved them. And I've had five. I'm now on my sixth Land Cruiser. Six Land Cruiser, and what sort of Land Cruiser are we talking about? Uh, Not like I a 200 series, right? No, no, uh, Troop Carrier. Um, the troop seven, Carrier. So I so love the Troop Carrier for Overland, because my passion is going into the desert and finding amazing places. That's my passion, as opposed to off-roading. Yeah. I like the overlanding. So you're a camper. I love camping. Actually, funnily enough, I don't like camping much. That's good, because now but I, do I camp at the Hyatt. <laughs> okay, but I, <laughs> okay, yes, well, you get the meaning. Yeah. I don't like camping for the sake of camping. But if I can go to an amazing place in the middle of nowhere, then camping takes on a whole new meaning. So off the beaten track. It's as far as I can get. So what's the most amazing place you've been to? Because you've been to some pretty amazing I places. I have, and I have, and I always come back to one particular place. I can send you some images if you like. It's a place in the Makati Kari Salt Plains, in the middle of Botswana. Makati Kari, I've heard so much about it. i heard it's amazing. It's beyond amazing. It is just it's not of this planet yeah. and there's one particular place called South Island and not many people go there because I've actually tried to go is there. Is that the rock sticking out of the thing? No, that's Kubu and South Island is quite close to Kubu. Imagine an island on a white, flat white, mm. you can't stare at it, it's too bright to look at. Is it full sunglasses that tell everything? Oh, everything. But now here's an island made out of grey rock. Mm -hmm. And somebody's taken a bucket of, it looks what it looks like, a bucket of whitewash and thrown it onto the grey rocks. Oh. So you have grey, white, grey, white, yellow grass that is yellow, 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 taxi cab yellow grass and baobab trees that are over a thousand year old and they're red. So it's you like have an this impressionist painting is what it sounds like. You have this insane mix of colours and incredible trees yeah. and it is in the middle of nowhere. That you will, you can go there Even for a I would camp there. Oh, but I, I heard getting I mean, there is very difficult because the salt plans are just... Very, very difficult. And as I said, I, I was going to say, I, I've tried to get there five times and only managed to actually reach What's them stopping twice. You? Mud. Okay. When I'm sure that, you know what to do. No, 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 no. You don't understand. <laughs> if you hit that mud, you turn around and you go back. So there's literally nowhere to Because go. the vehicle sinks so low, it, it breaks through. Yeah. And, and what's it, underneath? Nothing. Just miles and miles of slush. Nothing. Vehicles have been known to vanish. That's so insane. when you start getting through, breaking through the mud, you do something to get out of it because it's. So and you just it winch yourself out straight away off the thing. Uh, yeah, if you've got another vehicle, I don't do it on my own, oh. and I have actually done it once on my own, and that was crazy. But anyway, it's it's madness. The the, the pans hmm. are so beautiful, but they hide their secrets well. Yeah. But you, you can not drop them. Yeah, I did dry season yeah. and there had been no rain mm -hmm. for about seven months before the time I went there yeah. and I managed to get through okay. so it's an amazing place. So what are you looking for out here I mean are you ha I mean I, I wouldn't suggest this otherwise but do you have much sand experience so typically you're more like I've done a lot of trips through Namib the Namib yeah. I've done some trips through the sand sea of the Namib uh, the best one I remember six days of nothing but sand dunes yeah. and the highest dunes in the world yeah. so they say yeah. And then you end up on this coast, and the coast is barren, barren, barren coast. Again, yeah. in the There's middle of There's a ghost nowhere. city there, isn't there? There's a, there are a number of ghost cities, yes. Yeah. Um, it's totally reclaimed by the sand. Yeah, literally, yeah. And so that again has its own very unique 
character. Yeah. The Namib is unlike any other desert. The sand driving is similar. Yeah. So I've had some, I don't consider myself an expert sand driver, yeah. but I, I have done it and I, I'm, I can cope. Yeah. And I've seen other people do it really, really well and I watch them closely. <laughs> well, I think you'll find that the UAE is a particularly challenging place for sand because there's so many different textures of sand. Yes. Like so the sand you get in Sharjah is different from what you get in Lever. Because oh, okay. it's like topsoil, it blows away quite easily, whereas in Sharjah it's quite clumpy, etc. So okay. it's quite easy to drive on, yes. but in Lever is where the men separate from the boys. Because oh. you need the power. <laughs> yes. You need the... Yes. Because what you find, frankly, what you're used to is sort of slow, tactical off-roading, and what we have out here is what we Arabs would call harakat, because we just flow it and gun Forward. it and, and hope for the best. Okay, all right, and you can. I presume you won't ride with that because you are far too experienced and sensible. Well, and I am quite sensible. I think I probably am quite sensible. But I've watched some of the videos of the local people doing sand dunes, and I just my this eyes is not necessarily the best way to do it. <laughs> no, but it's sometimes very, very effective because yeah. I see them going up extreme dunes on their side. Yeah. And they're, they're tracking straight, even though the vehicle is on the side, because yeah. they've got so much power. So much can. momentum. And you just momentum and power, they can just push through. You so, know, so I'm not used to that much power in my vehicles. That's that true, because you're starting diesels. Mostly diesels. And this is like the petrol prices here must be heaven for you. It's quite silly, actually. <laughs> so where are you from originally? I was born in England. Yeah. I spent 38 years of my life in Africa, touring mm -hmm. all of Africa. I know Southern Africa very, very well. So you are well. one of those lost Englishmen who ends up all over the world. Really. Well, kind of. My mother was born in Australia. My yeah. father was born in New Zealand. It doesn't matter which cricket team wins. I'm the you're, winner. You're good. I'm, I'm okay. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I just... Uh, my... I think that what makes my channel unique is that I really do my best to go everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and while I've, I've, I'm settling in Australia now, and, and I'll do lots of Australian videos, but I will continue to go to Africa. I will come back here. I will go. I go to the United States. I've been there three years in a row to the United States. Did you know in the United States there are amazing, wild, remote places with nobody? I can I, believe it. I've done the Rubicon ah. trail. I've done oh, okay, been. you have. All right, then you know. I didn't know that two years ago. Have you ago. done the Rubicon yet? No. It is no. absolutely sensational. I did um, Death Valley last year. I did the Mojave Trail the year before. It's an American amazing breadth of scenery in one place. Yes. But the UAE is similar, except that afterwards you go to the mall. Because okay. is, the landscape is so small that you pop out of the dunes and you pretty much just 10 minutes later you're back in the city. Okay. It's not like Africa or even Australia where you drive and drive and drive and drive. It's very uh, different out here. Uh, right. so I presume you'll enjoy it though. And you've been to Oman as well, you've done a lot of time in Oman. Yeah, I love it. Oman is spectacular. I mean, it's I over landing, got, it yeah. is fantastic. We I got totally it. robbed the UAE because yeah. we got the malls. <laughs> <laughs> and they got the beautiful landscapes like two minutes outside the city. You have huge, amazing rock formations yeah. and mountains. It's incredible. The coast is gorgeous. So what are you expecting from this Jeep? As you say, you're pretty new to the brand. I mean, you've done these deals before. How do you think it's going to compare to your trusty Toyotas and your Land Rovers? I think it's going to be nothing like it. Because as you say, I've got... If you get technical, by the way, you've, you've done... Yes, well, we're going to be doing a lot of June. There will be some technical, but yeah. the technical, the Land Cruisers are very good. Yeah. They're very good. Yeah. I don't think they're as good as this. Really? Overall, that's a, that's, that's, off-road. That's a contentious statement. Thanks, well, Sean. Your might, phone's ringing. Look, <laughs> it, might be a, it might be a contentious statement, but I, I look at it from a real... I'm not brand bl blind. A lot of people in the off-roading world are. I know, and I really try hard not to be... I love my... Because you miss out on so much experiences. I was never a big fan of Defenders till I drove them. At, they're slow, but they're so much fun. They've got so much character. And, the character, and they're fantastic to yeah. drive. But yeah. I wouldn't like a Defender... Every on day. sand or every day okay and my land cruisers are similar to that lots of character and great for technical driving for overlanding mm. fantastic carrier load mm. brilliant mm -hmm. but a bit underpowered that diesels are anyway mm. not so much the v8 and this is a different ball game altogether and when i drove this last year difficult technical driving mm. it's, it's brilliant it is a brilliant one of the road. highest watch videos on your channel is actually with your defender versus a wrangler Okay. No, my highest uh, video. Uh, oh, that's the one I watched is, a lot. Uh, oh, it's a, no, it's a, I did a, a major conversion to a Defender yeah. with a camper. Yeah. It's got about a million and a half views. That's my top wow. one. That's incredible. So, uh, in about a year and about 18 months. Okay, so to wrap things up here, what's the big plan here? So, you're going seven Emirates, you said? Yes, and uh, of course, the, uh, the, the uh, travel show and the. Um, Outdoor camping show. Going to do some autograph signings. Yes. So if you have meet and greet. Yeah. Meet will be meet and greet uh, at the show tomorrow, which is uh, not from uh, Friday. Yeah. Um, I think we're starting at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. 
Five eight, till seven. Possibly. <laughs> five to seven. And come then, and say hello. And then after that, lots and lots of off-roading. Blah, blah, then blah. first thing next morning, out to leave the desert. And Lever. then off after this, what's next? Uh, Australia. Yeah. I've got a vehicle build starting in Australia okay. in a month and a half time, and then I'm doing Canning Stock, the world's wow. longest. That's supposed know. to be brutal. I'm doing Canning Stock in July. I'm what leaving doing 11th it? of July. What are you doing it in? Mother Troopy that I'm building. Oh, oh, okay. Hopefully it all works then. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't, you're going to find out about we it. We will find out about an excruciating but wonderful video. It's been an absolute pleasure, Andrew. It's my pleasure too. So Thank a quick you. little shout out. What's your channel? Where can people find you? Okay, 4xoverland.com mm. is my website. And on the website, you'll see links to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, Instagram, you name it. So it's 4xoverland.com. Cool. And this, of course, is Motor Middle East. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and all the rest. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Andrew Simpia-White. My pleasure. Right.